Welcome back to Defending Zion. My name is Blake, and today I'm going to talk about why the tribe of Dan is not included in the list of the 144,000. So we get this list of the 144,000 in Revelation 7, verses 4 through 8. And as we go through, obviously we see all the tribes are there except for Dan. So do the scriptures say anything about why Dan may not be included in the 144,000? Well, as we go through um, D&C 7711, we learn that the 144,000 are those who are sealed, um, that are high priests, ordained under the holy order of God, to administer the everlasting gospel. Um, they're ordained out of every nation, kindred, tongue, and people by the angels, to whom is given power over the nations of the earth, to bring as many as will come to the church of the firstborn. So this idea of administering the everlasting gospel, it's a, uh, it's a missionary um, term, right? Um, in the context of the 144,000, this is specifically related to the gathering of scattered Israel throughout all parts of the earth. Now, the tribe of Dan's exclusion from this group of gatherers or missionaries suggests that they're not given this specific responsibility in the latter days. But if they aren't given the responsibility of being gatherers or missionaries, what is going to be their role in the latter days? For this, we do need to go back into the Old Testament to look at the blessing that Jacob gave to Dan. In Genesis 49, verses 16 and 17, it says, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. So Dan is specifically blessed to be a judge in Israel. And we see in Old Testament history how the tribe of Dan fulfilled this role, clearly. But is that where their blessing ended, is in the Old Testament days? Or is it possible that the tribe of Dan could again fulfill their role as judges in Israel in the latter days. Interesting enough, there is a scripture in Isaiah. Um, Isaiah, in talking about the latter days, says, And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. Now, if we look at the Hebrew word for restore in verse 26, it also means to return. So the Lord will not only gather or restore Israel in the latter days, but he will also restore or return a group of people that have been blessed to judge the house of Israel. And also, I think it's, it's important for us to notice here that Zion is mentioned along with this verse. Okay, so this restoring or returning of the tribe of Dan to be judges is somehow connected to Zion. So is there anywhere in scriptures where we can find a connection between judges and Zion? Well, there are a few places in the Doctrine and Covenants. Um, in D&C 107, 73, and 74, it says, This is the duty of a bishop who is not a literal descendant of Aaron, but has been ordained to the high priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Thus shall he be a judge, even a common judge, among the inhabitants of Zion, or in a stake of Zion, or in any branch of the church where he shall be set apart unto this ministry, until the borders of Zion are enlarged, and it becomes necessary to have other bishops or judges in Zion or elsewhere. Okay, So we know that there will be bishops who don't have to be literal descendants of Aaron, so they don't have to be of the tribe of Levi. Um, and they have the high priesthood, right, the Melchizedek priesthood. And we know that they'll be judges, and that they'll participate as a common judge in Zion. Uh, we also uh, learn in D&C 107, 71 to 72, Nevertheless, a high priest that is after the order of Melchizedek may be set apart unto the ministering of temporal things, having a knowledge of them by the Spirit of truth, and also to be a judge in Israel, 
to do the business of the church, to sit in judgment upon transgressors, upon testimony as it shall be laid before him according to the laws, by the assistance of his counselors, whom he has chosen or will choose among the elders of the church. So notice how in this scripture there are both judges and there are counselors. This wording matches Isaiah's wording perfectly about judges being restored. And counselor says it the first, right? So these judges in Israel will have counselors. And part of their purpose will be to sit in judgment, to be a judge in Israel. But part of it will be to minister in temporal things, uh, to, to administer the law of consecration in Zion. And we know that's going to be a great work that's going to have to take place in Zion. And then we also have this scripture in D&C 58, 17 and 18. And whoso standeth in this mission, meaning a, a bishop in Zion, is appointed to be a judge in Israel, like as it was in ancient days, to divide the lands of the heritage of God unto his children, and to judge his people by the testimony of the just, and by the assistance of his counselors, according to the laws of the kingdom which are given by the prophets of God. So here again we have another witness that these bishops are, these, are to be judges, um, like in ancient days, to divide the lands, so to divide inheritances up, and to be a, a judge, and that they will be assisted by counselors um, to administer uh, the laws of the kingdom. So brothers and sisters, I hope this has given you some understanding about what the tribe of Dan is going to be um, used for in the latter days, what their purpose is going to be, um, and why they aren't included in that list of the 144,000. I want to bear testimony that these things are true in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.